In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint gold three ways fast and then some amazing techniques for leveling up your gold in general. In today's video, we are tackling gold in three different ways. So this one here, believe it or not, we didn't use any gold paints on whatsoever. We just used silver paints and then a wash. Uh, this one here started off uh, kind of traditionally and this one here started off from a retrofit armor spray base. Uh, the one in the middle, we've then taken those three fast techniques and we've combined them all into a slower, more controllable technique, which is one that I'd really recommend trying out if you want a little bit more control or you have like a special character or something like that, or you're just really enjoying it and you want to kind of push things further. But the three uh, preliminary techniques are super fast and you can even skip steps out of those. You can skip the wash out, you can skip some of the uh, final dry brushing out there like four or five stages max and all of them are super quick and super fun. So if you like the video, please give it a like, please comment, please subscribe. Let us know any ideas or questions you have about how to combine techniques. That's something I'm really looking to drive forward uh, with these fundamental videos is that you can approach stuff in whatever way you like, as long as you have a plan and things will end up absolutely fine. Okay, so here we are. These are bases all for gold. And yes, that one is silver. I will cover that shortly. I've used Retributor Armor Spray on this one and you can use any dark silver spray on this. I have airbrushed it with a mix of black and silver just to create a darker silver. So what we have here is Do More Brown and Xerus Purple and some water. I'm just using a nice chunky size four. It's about 50-50 uh, water to paint and this is going all over our shield. Now you might need a little bit of patience here, especially if you've used a um, a spray for your base coat like I have. I've used the Retributor Armor spray on this one. Uh, they can be a little bit more glossy than you're used to, uh, but be patient and with a couple of attempts, you should manage to get coverage over the entire thing. Basically at the point at which you get a very slight sheen of moisture on that finger, that is not too much water and that's the perfect amount for waking up your brush. So I'm using Retributor Armor. So we've got our kind of purpley base uh, mixed with a brown so it stayed warm. I'm going to mix in some of our paints with my Retributor Armor, just the same one from the previous stage, work off the excess and then we're onto the dry brushing. It's going to be done gently all over and I've not got a particular direction in mind. I'm just looking to steadily build up an overall impression of this uh, kind of uh, we want a an old regal gold, basically. And take a tiny touch of this, like a, a, a minuscule amount. It is an extremely powerful paint and we want this to look bright gold rather than silver. So I'm really working that in. Maybe even going back and taking a little bit of our gold just to make sure that we maintain that ratio. And then using the exact same motion, but just a little less pressure, give this and then take a bit more. And for potentially our last step, we'll have to see how this goes. You can already see the difference we've got on the palette there. It's one of the nice things about using a texture palette, you get to test everything before it's on your model. That is a kind of classic old gold. So this is the 100% um, series D method. Take a little bit of our Doom Ball, mix it with a little bit of Retributor. And this is going to be our base coat. Now, as you can see, this mix has particularly obscene coverage. Um, I don't suspect you'll need more than two coats. Uh, by all means, feel free to do it kind of uh, thin and super carefully. But as long as you've used, uh, you've used your dampening pad on your brush, um, you shouldn't struggle with kind of any untoward building up of unwanted texture. There we go base coating in 10 seconds. Okay, so unsurprisingly, we're stepping through to Retributor Armor as it is my favorite gold in the world. Somewhat similarly to our last one, we are looking to leave some of our mix with a non-metallic uh, paint in the recesses, but we're just kind of gently buffing this up as much as you like. You can do this completely all over if you want. You can start from a pure Retributor base. That's a really good substitute for using the spray or you can do what I'm doing here and have it kind of covering 90% of the model, just disregarding the most extreme recesses or particular areas that you want to keep in shadow or stuff like that. 
Now, very similarly to the previous method, we're just mixing a little bit of paint with water. I've just got black here. It doesn't matter what black you're using as long as it's not a, a gloss black or something really extreme, you're fine with anything here. I'm mixing it with a bit of the brown that we've used previously. Again, about 50-50 with water and exactly the same as the previous tutorial. I'm just looking to give it a all over wash. Now, as we said last time, if you want to pull it against uh, particular areas, you can end your strokes up against them. You might want to concentrate on the raised details because you want maximum contrast there. Uh, no reason to be super neat. Uh, the only thing I'd recommend is that if you are getting pulling, uh, make sure it's pulling that you want and do your best to control it. Now, as with a lot of my washes, uh, I'm gonna to choose to do this twice. Entirely up to you how many times you wanna do it, how much black you wanna put in, all that stuff. I'm gonna add in a little bit more because I'm going for something high contrast here. It's a little bit more black in the mix. And I'm just gonna give the entirety of the piece a second wash. Okay, so we've really instantly added some proper age to that, just through that step. One of the fantastic things about using uh, paints as washes and take a little bit more retributor and we're going to be giving this guy a fairly careful highlight now we've got this color all over the model uh, or the piece as it is but with this one like i said we're looking for a pretty harsh contrast between the raised areas and the recessed areas so you're going to see me doing pretty careful buffing i'm going to do one more pure retributor stage working off my excess, test out my texture palette, make sure it's not too much. There we go, perfect. So straight on to grabbing a tiny bit of our silver, mixing it with our retributor on the palette, working it in, and then predominantly concentrating on the edges first. While it's heavy, we can use this for an edge highlight. Then when we're happy with it, we can move through to the center of the model. And take silver, mix it in the same place in the palette again. Now this is pretty much pure silver at this stage. So I'm gonna work it into the bristles just to make it homogenize and mix within the bristles with that little bit of gold that we'll have remaining in there. And then very, very carefully and sparingly hit those edges again, hit that design again, left to right to pick up the details, up and, up and down to pick up the details, top and bottom. And there we go, that is some beautiful, gorgeous old gold. All right, so it's wildcard time. Here you see uh, it's a model that's been base coated with a mix of our TM silver and any black, doesn't matter which one. Uh, or you can use a lead vulture spray or any dark silver spray, something like that. And we are not gonna be touching gold paint on this. So, sorry Retributor Armor, you're going away. And hopefully this blows a few of your minds because it is an absolutely amazing way to paint gold. I think people really just don't realize the power that it has. So what I'm gonna be doing is mixing up a black wash. I'm gonna put in a little bit of Xerus purple. A little bit more than that, it's powerful black. And we're gonna give it an all over wash again, as you've seen so regularly throughout this tutorial now. For exactly the same reasons that we've stipulated before, we are looking to kind of shade those recesses, really make them, uh, kind of knock them back, so to speak. So as with all of these steps, you can repeat this to your heart's content or not, uh, whichever one you want. You don't even have to do the wash step. If you don't wanna have that in your recesses, you could actually mix this purple in with your first layer, and then you don't have to uh, involve it in the wash. There's multiple ways to achieve a very, very, very similar technique. There we go, it's looking lovely in our recesses. Now we're gonna get our same brush that we've been using for all of these. This is a testimony to the value of cleaning as you go with our brushes. If you kind of try your best to help paint exit onto the palette, it really does work wonders. Pure silver at this stage, working off the excess. And then just as we have with our golds, we're gonna buff this up. Now it goes without saying, the stage that we're gonna do to make these uh, gold, you can completely ignore and in that case you've got a lovely tutorial on how to paint purpley silver and of course the purple wash that we did could have been blue could have been green could have been absolutely whatever so we have one extremely nice silver shield which is obviously quite away from us trying to paint gold so we're going to get some lamium medium 
pop a little bit of that on our palette. And then we're gonna be adding a yellow wash to this. So I'm gonna be using Cassandora yellow, but you could use an ink or uh, something like ink tense yellow from Scale 75 would be perfect. Or, you know, anything that is usable as a yellow filter at this point. Cassandora is quite a strong shade paint, hence me diluting it. I'm gonna test it on my palette. I always go on about this, but if you look at that, you can see me getting a perfect test for exactly how this is going to go on my model. I'm cool with that, so off we go. Now maybe we need it to be a little bit more bright than that. Always good to include your mistakes, that is not nearly yellow enough. I'm going to dry this and then we're going to go in with a higher proportion of that Cassandora. Take two. More Cassandora. So as I said before, we're not looking to do this as a wash, we're doing it as a filter. And the idea with that is we get about the same amount of coverage all over the piece in question. So if you can at all, mop up those recesses. We're not looking to do any type of shading through this in the kind of the modern Citadel. This is a wash sense. You can do this as many times as you like, and you can do it uh, kind of as thick or as thin as you like, and that will just dictate how gold you end up looking. After that layer is dried, we can really see the effect we're going for. Here is it versus a kind of conventionally painted with gold one, and you can see that actually the effect is really quite cool and fairly distinctive. Uh, if you're wondering about highlights, what you can do, and I'll touch on this with a little bit of extra education at the end of the video, so I'm a real fan of this, is kind of doing your highlights in the middle of the painting process. So not as the very last step, but what we're gonna be doing here is taking our silver that we've already used, working a fair bit of it off the brush, and then using it to place down some highlights in exactly the way that we were using it before. And reintroduce it fairly lightly, nothing super heavy, but we are looking to pay special attention to all of our edges. So you can see I'm doing my default here in them at a 45 degree. If this is my edge here, how to demonstrate this, I want to be going this way or this way and that will ensure equal coverage top and bottom and uh, I'll hit the edge really nicely. So with that done, especially in the center, really love that insignia. I want it to be kind of popping. You can jump back to our Cassandra yellow and go again. So for finishing touches, I've got the same brush. I've not even taken it back to the palette or anything like that. I'm just using it with a tiny bit of silver remaining. And this is gonna be used to pick out those edges. You really don't have to be careful if you've got this much paint on your brush. It is pretty impossible to go wrong. Go back to my dampening pad, reawaken a little bit of the paint and the bristles. All right, so there we go. Three different golds achieved in very different ways. And as I'm always saying with these kind of fundamental videos, I'm trying to give you a set of tools that you can combine in any way you like. So you could take the kind of the concepts of washing, of filtering and glazing on this, and you could use them on these. Uh, diluted a lot as like a final way just to bring it up to make it a little bit more gold. Uh, you could take the purple recess theory and use that. You could go back on this one with a wash made with just um, with just paint and water and pull that towards the recesses to get some more contrast. All of these are completely combinable and kind of customizable techniques. So as I like to put my money where my mouth is, what I'm gonna do now is do just what I've said. And I'm gonna take one of these shields and I'm gonna customize it using the techniques that we've just spoken about. So what I'm gonna go for this is kind of bring this up to a higher painting level just by repeating a couple of the stages that we've done already. So using our purple and black wash, what I'm gonna start doing is doing some concentrated washes picking out areas and ending my brush strokes in them on the model. So I wanna shade against all of these details, have the recesses darker, and just add a little bit more visual interest before I go in and do some kind of specific uh, buffing, dry brushing, however you wanna see it. Once you've done this wash once, uh, one of the lovely things about washes is the moment you've used one once, you can get away with doing a lot more stuff with your second wash because your image is kind of ready to be hit with these colors again without stuff looking uh, kind of alien or out of place. Okay, so all I'm gonna be doing here is simply repeating uh, the stages that I've done so far. But what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna be doing more of these stages towards the edge of the shield. So I want the 
raised area in the middle to remain a little bit brighter. But the areas at the edges, I'm gonna be making a bit darker. So I want a kind of a shiny middle of my shield and hopefully I'm gonna be able to achieve that by shading down the areas around the edges or at least ending my strokes on the edges of the shield rather than in the middle. All right, so as we can see with that, um, perhaps I shouldn't have uh, done it down here because I'm kind of looking to simulate the fact that it is a curved surface, so all of the middle should be, um, should be brighter with these edges being darker, not this edge, but you know, learning. And uh, what we've got here now is this lovely, lovely exaggerated effect where the stuff in the middle looks super shiny because it is brighter. Really, really nice kind of a gorgeous steel effect on the go or tarnished gold. find is that if there were a few mistakes in that washing glazing stage which there definitely can be if you've got pooling or anything like that this buffing should pretty much entirely mitigate those having worked that up confident enough now to go through to a purer silver still gonna use the dampening pad work it in test it abundantly on here and then Carefully bring that, and this is going for every edge on the model. Softly, you can probably hear from the uh, the lack of sound of brush strokes if they've been picked up by the camera that this is like whisper soft dry brushing here. Final one, this will be the purest one that we've done so far. There we go. Really happy with that. That's got some gorgeous kind of uh, depth and interest to its colors. Very Spartan. All right, so there the shields are again. I really like all of these. I don't know which one I'd pick. This one has got its merits, it's kind of classic. This one is a little bit more techy and obviously I like the control, but it does take a bit longer. And then this one, it's just interesting to start from a silver base and end up with something that looks that much goldy. And um, it does kind of remind me of all the armor from 300. Um, so I kind of like it for that reason. They're all really good fun. Uh, you can use these uh, quite specifically, delicately with smaller brushes, or you can use them all over big models or kind of entire models. I have a Stormcast here. He's not done in gold, he's done in silver, but I use exact the same kind of uh, sequence of techniques. And uh, that was done all over a model and then I put some weathering on top of it. So however you like doing your gold, whatever your end result is you're looking to achieve, you can get it with one of these three techniques. And if you want to do some crazy hybrid to get something funky then I really, really do encourage that. It's part of the fun of painting is experimenting and stuff like that. And if you have any questions, like you want to do a gold with a blue tin or something like that, just pop them below. We read each and every question and we will give you an answer. I'll get to that and I'll tell you how I would approach going about this. Um, we've only used four or five different paints really in this entire tutorial and I've chosen a lot of my favorites. So hopefully any of you grabbing those paints and trying them out should find out how much of a difference it makes for you to be using the right paints for the job rather than trying to fit bad ones, which is why I use Retributor Armor and Game Air Silver because as metallics they are phenomenal and they will make your life a lot easier. So thank you very much for watching the video. If you got to the end, um, do give it a like, please comment, please subscribe, hit that bell notification so you can be notified for future content and we'll catch you in the next release.